some people's content, if you watch their content, right? If you, there, there's nothing to even apply. All right, my content, uh, ratchet and shit like that, but there's certain content like, oh, you know, how to buy a property from step by step, stuff like that. You can actually learn from my content. Now, there's some people's content you can't learn nothing from, and then they wonder why they get shadow banned. There's man on YouTube, they got a YouTube channel, they got like a thousand, five hundred subscribers and that, or two thousand subscribers, and they're talking about their shadow banned and that. Hold oh, on a minute, they're not even showing their fucking face on YouTube. Am I really going to take a man seriously what he says if he can't even have the balls to put his face on YouTube? He don't want to put a face to the words. He wants to hide behind a blank screen. I can't take you that seriously if you're not willing to show your face on YouTube. You can make a hundred videos talking about this, talking about that, but you can't put your, your face to it. Come on, man. Come on. You're a grown man. You can come on YouTube and talk this and talk that, but you can't put your face on YouTube. And you want to moan about being shadow banned? Really? Come on, fam. Come on, fam. If you feel like you're shadow banned on YouTube, try something else. It's not the be on end all. I would love to have thousands and upon thousands and thousands of subscribers and that. But if it don't happen, try something else. How about you talk all this stuff on YouTube, right? How about trying to go on stage and talking to a couple hundred people or whatever? No, they don't want to do that because they don't want to step out of their comfort zone. Yeah, YouTube was outside of their comfort zone when they first started. But now they're in their comfort zone. YouTube's comfortable for them. You have to continuously step out of your comfort zone. Never get complacent. Live streaming ain't comfortable for me. What if I start stuttering and freeze up in that? Eh? But man for always step out of their comfort zone or whatever, innit? That people will watch this on live streams shit and stuff. Who's, who's James Charles? People watch the um, live stream for yay, shit and that. Well, my live streams will get better, innit? Yeah. Live streaming is different to fucking making a video. I can cancel the video and start again. I can edit stuff out. What you're seeing now, I can't do nothing. I can't edit nothing out of this live stream. Yeah. If I... Yeah, start starting bumping in all my words, then that's on the live stream, innit? But I don't even need to worry about what people think because if you've ever done a live stream before, if you've yeah, if you're confident enough to do a live stream, you know your first or second live streams, you know what the pressure was like, in it, yeah. So you know, okay, boom, this is what it's like. That certain people like they will go and do a public speech, whatever in it, and they'll yeah, they won't be hundred percent them, whatever in it. And there's certain people that will sit in the crowd. And observe them and think, oh, you know, whatever. And yeah. He ain't that confident. But, well, if you've been up there, fam, you will know what it's like. Yeah? When at Taekwondo, yeah? Man, I said already a Taekwondo fighter, isn't it? There's man that don't enter the competition. They're on the sideline, they're a spectator, and they're talking about, if I was him, I would have threw this kick, I would have threw this punch, I would have done this, I would have been able to beat that person. But you're not even entering the ring. What are you talking about, fam? Like, you can talk when you're in the ring. But if you're not in the ring, don't, I don't want to hear you say nothing, fam. Because being a spectator and being a participant is two different things. Remember that. Yeah? And if you have ever been in the ring, if you've ever done a live stream before, if you've ever gone on stage and spoke to a mass audience, you will know what it's like. Yeah? It's different. You lot watching me, 
You don't have to worry about what you're going to say next or whatever. You are just, eh, chilling. Certain people are at work right now and they're supposed to be doing work and they're relaxing and they're watching me. Yeah. You know who you are, saying no names. Yeah. Some people, they, you lot here are just watching. Yeah. You don't need, don't need to worry about what you're going to say next or whatever. You lot are the spectators and nothing against none of you lot. But I'm the participant. It's different. Trust me. It's different. There's a YouTuber with millions of subscribers and she got vets because her music ain't banging views. That person that's got a million subscriber, is subscribers, who's complaining about her music's not banging. Obviously, I don't know who this person is, isn't it? But let's just assume they were doing normal stuff, right? Like normal YouTube videos like me, content, right? But they're not an artist, yeah? Bruv, you cannot expect to be a fucking overnight success. See, this is people's problem. They expect to be like Bobby Schmurder. Drop one track and then they blew up. That overnight success thing, it don't last long, you know? You will fade out. If you ain't, if you ain't really talented, you're going to fade out. So yeah, you might be an overnight success. You might be an overnight success, but it's not going to last long. If you ain't got no real talent, you're going to fade out. There's some people, right? There's some people, they come to YouTube with a strategy, with a tactic. Yeah. What they do is, they just collab with people from day one. They just jump on live streams with people and collab with people. And after a couple months, boom, they got bare like a thousand, couple thousand subscribers or whatever in after a couple months. But unless that person is generally willing to put in the work, willing to do three, four hundred videos, they're going to fade out. Because they're looking for overnight success. They sat back and watched YouTube, watched the algorithm, watched how things work, and thought, okay, boom. You know what? Rather than put in the work and make 200 videos and wait for it to build up organically, I'm going to jump on people's live streams and get subscribers that way, innit? Basically, almost like clout chasing, basically. Almost, isn't it? Yeah? Without, with, kind of like clout chasing, isn't it? Yeah, but instead they're not jumping on anyone's name or disrespecting anyone in here, but they're coming to YouTube with a strategy, the, the, the do it quick plan. You're going to fade out. You will fade out 100%. You'll get to a point where you're just going to fade out. And even if you do have 30, 40, 50,000 subscribers, are those people going to buy your books? Are they going to buy your material that you've got for sale? Is your material going to be good? Is it going to be worth reading? The answer is no. All right, let me see what AYL did. Oh, two hours and 23 minutes. Jeez. Doing well, doing well, doing well. Definitely. If I had like a live stream where I had people calling up, oh my goodness me. I would I could I could do this for five hours, I think. Because this is two hours and twenty-three minutes. And obviously I do feel like I'm running out of things to say, not gonna lie, you know, but the fact that I've kind of kept up this pace and this momentum for this long and they don't even feel like that. I could definitely do double this talking to people on the phone. So I can't wait to get to a, a level, like let's say like King Richards, he has people calling in and stuff and they come up with like, um, you know, they, they talk about um, interesting things. I could go on all day just chatting, just chatting, chatting, chatting. And to get paid for it as well, fucking hell. Because they get super chats and that, innit? Now, I don't know how the super chats work, I think, yeah, you have to be um, have to have a thousand subscribers, four thousand hours worth of watch time to um, uh, get get the super chat sent in and stuff, so people can pay you or whatever. Isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, I hope to get to that kind of level soon where I can um, get paid for being on YouTube because I feel like I should be paid for the stuff I do on YouTube. Like, there's videos that I've made, like that video I made. Um, talking about my driving experience where I was wearing the, the JY's jacket 
That video took me two days to shoot. Two days, you know, I had about 300 video clips that I had to edit or some, some mad number like that. And it took me a whole day to edit that video. Like, I'm talking about, like, man started editing that video at, like, 10 a.m. and didn't finish it until, like, maybe midnight. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like I should be paid for, 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 for YouTube. Yeah, what I've done on YouTube, car man's put the content out there, innit? But it is ways. I, I I don't expect overnight results, innit? I expect to work for free. Like I'm doing this shit for free. You know? But what keeps me going is because I actually like doing it or whatever, innit? But yeah, I expect to work for free for a long time. You know? I've got long term thinking. You see, like Les Brown and that when they make videos about. Um, planting the seeds for the bamboo tree and not seeing any results for four years and on the fifth year things sprout up that's how you have to think you have to be willing to put in the work and not see any results that's how I think yeah, as long as I've got a passion for it I don't mind doing it for free yeah. obviously if you don't enjoy doing something you ain't going to want to do it for free and if you don't enjoy doing something, you're never going to put in that effort. Jesus Christ, I would love to know the effort that I would put in. If I if, if I knew I was going to get a, a hundred pound per live stream, I fucking, the whole day would be a live stream to a blood clot. Yeah, I'll be live streaming, yeah, do five live streams a day. Yeah, I'll find something to come out with, yeah, to talk about. Yeah. So one thing I know is about me. My ideas are really creative, innit? Like, I don't know if people make YouTube videos like me. Like, you know when I make them YouTube videos where, say, for example, like the riding and driving experience or the one where I'm talking about my nasty tenants or the one where I'm talking about the, the DIY tradesman where I'm doing lots of different um, shots around my house. I don't think people... Yeah, maybe people do videos similar to that, innit? But I don't think people do it exactly like that. I've never seen another YouTuber do videos like that. Now, maybe there probably is a YouTuber who does, but I, I ain't seen no other YouTubers, and I think my ideas are really, um... <laughs> yeah, man need credit, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think um, like, my ideas are original and that, anyway, so, like, definitely, I feel like I need to be fucking fly. I need to be paid for, for my effort on, on YouTube. And you know what? That's the thing. Even if I don't make it on YouTube or get paid for the stuff I've done on YouTube, one day I will get paid for it. Yeah? It, it might not even be the book sales. Yeah? I'm, say, for example, when this book comes out, I might not make any money from the book. Yeah? So I might, I might not make no money from YouTube. I might not make no money from the book. But that book might get me an interview on the BBC. And then they're like, right, this guy, yeah, Oh, can you um, go to secondary schools and help mentor the young people and stuff? And bam, that's where you get paid. That's when I get paid. But back to my original point where I was talking about it at the right beginning of the video, two hours ago, where I was talking about if you tell your idea to someone who's got a small mind, they will tear it down. Small-minded people will tell me, don't jump on YouTube. But if I didn't jump on YouTube then I would never have made that book. If I never made that book, then I might not have got opportunity to go on BBC. Now, obviously, this ain't happened yet. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, but this could happen, right? If I never jumped on YouTube, then I would have never have made a book. If I never made a book, never jumped on, never would have got a, an interview on the BBC. Never get an interview on the BBC, wouldn't get exposure. And people might want to pay me to go into schools and help mentor young people. So it's all as, yeah. It's like climbing the ladder of, of success. Certain times you might not see no results in all these different things, but you keep trying and then bam, you might land the result. 